God damn, that fight was so good. <laughs> Lane whipped his ass. Um, I just posted a poll. <laughs> I just saw the Mad Men episode where Lane whips Pete's ass. Who would win a battle royale between all of them? And the choices are Don, Roger, Lane, Pete, and Cooper. So what I'm going to do, I just literally just posted that just now. By the time I edit this, which will be... Actually, it's going to be pretty soon. I'll hold out, though. I'll, I'll, uh, we'll have at least three days on this poll before I fi finalize the editing. And I'll put, I'll put a screenshot of the poll results in, in right here. Yeah, so we can see that. I won't know what... Maybe I'll, I'll cut in with, with my reaction or I'll put some text or something. If it's something. Uh, here's what I think would happen. Okay. Cooper was here only because we have a fifth choice. I don't think Cooper's going to do shit. Pete has already shown he's a bitch-made motherfucker, so he's out. So it's between Don, Roger, and Lane. Lane clearly has some skills, but he, you know, I don't think he has a killer instinct. Roger is in a fucking war. And he's skinny. That means he, he somehow, like, the dude drinks like a fish. And he's still skinny. Which means he probably works out. I don't know if Roger would go to the gym. So I don't know, but I like I, the dude. He seems in decent shape, I, and probably what this is is the actor is in decent, really good shape. The actor works out. The actor goes to the gym, right? But the character, we gotta we gotta make this real. This is this is a, a fictional universe. The character looks the way the actor looks, so he must be in some kind of good shape. Probably, you know, because of his military background, he probably gets up and does you know five hundred push ups or sit ups or whatever that the U.S. have to do uh, during the military, right? I don't know. Now, this is all head cannon. He's in good shape, and he was in a fucking war. I actually think Roger would win. I do. Don could probably handle himself, but he's, he's, seen, he's more of a lover than a fighter. You know, you gotta watch those dudes. They're, they're fucking all the time. They don't have any pent-up rage, because they're fucking all the time. They'd be spitting the rage into other people, right? Women, you know, or whoever you're fucking. So, I would actually take Roger. Like, if you get all five of them in a ring together, only one person's allowed to walk out. Roger's walking out. <laughs> Roger, I think, has the eye of the tiger. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into this. This is episode six. Alcohol use, foul language, sexual content, smoking, and substance abuse. Oh, no! Not substance abuse! You know, Matthew Wiener hasn't been forcing his horrible kid on us this, this season. Did you eat my pack of violet candy? Really? What? She's still fucking this moron? I thought she was single again. I don't know why. I can't think beyond my presentation. There's always special circumstances. Good. Break up with this motherfucker. We're gonna have a fight. Cool. Let's go ahead and just let's go ahead and have this breakup happen right now. Don't wanna take me to work with you. And stick me in a drawer and open it whenever you get That's bored. Right. I'm using you, motherfucker. You don't wanna see each other anymore? Jesus. You always wanna push the button on the whole thing. Yeah, because that's the way it is with their boyfriends, because they all suck. Half the time you don't want to, and then you just do it. Get it over with. It's just hard when I come right from work. I need a second when I walk <laughs> in the door. You sound like my dad. You gotta romance that shit, dude. You're not sucking enough pussy if she feels this way about sex. My mind won't be elsewhere. Your mind is always elsewhere. Dude, Why you gotta are romance you doing that shit. Right you now. spend an hour romance and her mind is not gonna be elsewhere. I promise you this, man. I'm your boyfriend. Not a focus <laughs> group. Have a shitty day. <laughs> Fantastic. Dump this loser. <laughs> God, she has shitty choices. Not a good day. I would ship her with this motherfucker first before we ship her with that loser. This guy is hilarious. This would be a great relationship for my entertainment. I was buying dinner last night for this large-breasted girl who calls her story right there. Salome, and she's looking. Where the hell is this thing he gave her? Jesus. Oh, okay. Thank God. I couldn't take one more omen of pain. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're going to have to miss the presentation. Really? Howard Johnson's, huh? I love the colors. The atmosphere. Boy, you want to go? She's never been to one. Really? You're going out? Look at it. He's grinning like a loon. They're just going to fuck, man. They don't get enough fucking at home, apparently. They're going on a fucking little uh, excursion. I, what would you say? Like, Break a leg. Well, that's a disaster. What happens when you blow off school and you just go have fun? That's what they're doing. I can't think of the word for it. In the darkness. It's the beans that it brought them stinks. together on that cool night at the end of the summer. <laughs> she works so hard. 
Oh, this is cute. I like this. Home is where the I still is. like the, the dancing, waltzing. I wish beans. someone was eating beans. Oh, God damn. That guy is. I did ask for college students. He doesn't know what the fuck he wants, man. We need Don to close this shit. Stop writing down what I asked for and try to figure out what oh, I Jesus want. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Are you fucking serious? And I saw it's very sentimental. I have that memory. That's for me. That's not oh, for Jesus kids. Christ. Kids have memories. This dude, man, he's impossible to please. Did Don sign off on this? Don loves this work. But Don's not here, so I don't believe it. I'm sorry. I'm not a word person like you Jesus people. Jesus Christ, sure you man. Are. And your words are always, I don't like it. And I think you're right. So get fucked, I guess. Because you do like it. I think you just like writing. <laughs> People come in here and look at work and feel something. Almost. You're feeling this. She's going to close this shit. It's young and it's beautiful. Close and no this one shit. Else is gonna figure I'm with her in this. <laughs> I believe this. Girl? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Are you mad or not? Miss, you're lucky that I have oh, a daughter. Shit. I wouldn't be so understanding. Oh, shit. I thought she was going to close this shit, man. I thought it worked. I'm frustrated, too. It's close, I guess. It's damn close. You kiss-ass. Ken is the worst kiss-asser in the world. Lick that ass, motherfucker. He's not even kissing ass. He's licking that. He's licking the fuck out of that ass. It, it, like, dude, I understand you got to close this deal. Look, I've done this, man. I paused this. On the fucking a look of abject hate on uh, Reggie's face. My God, she could if she could murder him with laser beam eyes, she fucking would. It'd be over. He'd be a cinder on the floor, right? I've done that. I've literally done this job, like getting investor money. It's fucking hard, man. It's fucking hard. You sit here, you talk, you talk, you talk, you pitch, you pitch, you pitch, you pitch, you pitch. You know, it never turns out the way you think it's going to. You can prepare all you fucking want, and you do prepare all you want, right? Prepare fucking weeks. Stay up all night the night before. You've got everything. You got all your documents. You got all your fucking. Usually, that you bring three pitches, three different story ideas, right? Man, I'd bring five. You know what I'm saying? At one time, I brought five, and he hated them all, and I just made up some shit at the as I was sitting there, and fucking got the money from the one I made up. You never know what you're gonna get, right? But. You can't get emotional about this shit. You get, like this is a lot of money we're talking about here. It's a little different in this case because investor money—that's personal money. It's their personal money. Yes, they're looking to put it somewhere and get something back. But see, here's the thing. Here's what people don't understand about investing in movies. It's different than investing in anything else. Say you invest in Microsoft, and Microsoft goes down. Say you invest a hundred thousand dollars in Microsoft. Microsoft goes down enough to where that hundred thousand has become forty thousand. You sell it, you lost $60,000. You're never going to see that $6,000 again. That $40,000 could make $5 million somewhere else, like with Apple. But that $6,000 you lost, it's gone. You lost that shit. And you have nothing to show for it. Absolutely nothing. But when you invest $60,000 in a movie, and you lose it and it doesn't make money, at least you have a movie to show for it. You have a movie. You bought a movie with that money. You put food on the table for the 50 people who worked on that fucking movie. And you provided for them for a certain amount of time. Whereas when you invest in the stock market, you don't provide shit. It's gone. Maybe somebody made money with you when you lost money. I don't know. I don't understand enough about finances. But you'll never know that. For sure. But you know... You put food on the table for a couple weeks or a month for 50 people. And at the end of the day, you have a fucking DVD you can hold in your hands and you can show to people. You have a dinner party two years from now, you put that fucking DVD in, in, the, in there and you can show them a movie that you made that happened because of you. If you didn't exist, that movie wouldn't have happened. What I just said there, that's a pitch to an investor. I used to make that pitch all the time. Because investing in movies is unlike investing in anything else. Because at least if you lose money on a movie, you have something tangible that didn't exist before and now exists because of that money you lost. And that's if you lose the money. Maybe you won't lose the money. Maybe you'll get money back. And then you'll still have that tangible thing. But worst case scenario, at least you have a DVD 
to show for your money. The worst possible circumstance, you have a DVD, you can, you can show it to people. I did this. That's a pitch you make to investors, right? So I, used, I, I closed a lot of deals with that pitch. Because they usually like, they invest in land or they invest in stocks. And they lose money in stocks and they have nothing to show for it. Like, that's a big selling point. Like, if you're an aspiring filmmaker, you're trying to get investor money, use that pitch. It works. Because it's true. The point of all this is, when you talk to these people, you cannot be a fucking ass kisser. Ass kissing doesn't work. That's what they're showing the, the fucking people like Ken and Pete. You got to be respectful. You got to be mindful. You need to appreciate them as a human being, but you cannot kiss their ass. Because kissing ass doesn't work, man. I've tried it. It doesn't fucking work. It doesn't get you anywhere. If you do kiss their ass a bunch and then you actually fucking close a deal with it, great. But you could have closed it some other way. That's you, know, you won't talk me off that point. So anyway, um, it's, this is a hard job. I understand her frustration. It can be extremely frustrating to spend a week preparing for something and spend four, five, fuck, six fucking hours, maybe a two-hour round-trip drive to meet them and get nothing. They don't like anything. It can be really frustrating, but see, you never fucking go off on him. See, I thought what she was going to do, she was going to close it with that old, like, get in his face and talking shit to him. So I was like, okay, well, it's worth a shot, I guess. But no, it didn't work. I've never tried that approach. You don't talk down to people. You don't, like, get aggressive with them. I just don't. Anyway. But I thought it might have worked. But no, it doesn't. <laughs> She's just pissed. But you can't, like, I've said this many times. You cannot bring emotion into a business situation. It's always a loser choice. You cannot bring, you got to divorce yourself. You got to compartmentalize your emotions, man. It's all about focus and compartmentalizing. Compartmentalize your emotions. That night, you can beat a fucking pillow with your fist and cry about how fucking unfair it was. You don't do that in the moment. In the moment, you got to be cool and logical and practical. The most important thing is to be practical. What she did there, this look on her face that I keep looking at, you know, because I paused it there. That's not practicality we're seeing right here. That's being pissed. <laughs> <laughs>